Where does Derek Carr rank with the best quarterbacks in the NFL? Where would you rank him? Because there's been a new ranking out. Chris Sims does his top 40 quarterback countdown every year. Like, you can always tell when there's, like, a slow time in the NFL offseason. That's when everyone does their, like, rankings and yeah, like and- top 50 top 50 players with the cutest dogs list, like all this random stuff. And this is where Chris Sims is his top 40. And uh, he just recently released nine through 12 and he went 12, Kyler Murray, 11, Derek Carr, 10, Lamar Jackson, nine, Dak Prescott. And uh, his a little blurb they took of Sims talking about Derek Carr at number 11. He says, quote, the ultimate field general. What is negative about Derek Carr? He's done more at the line of scrimmage than any other quarterback in football the last two years. He's got size, he's mobile, and he has a very good arm. You can win a Super Bowl with this guy. I have a lot of respect for the adjustments he's made in his career, not only personality-wise, but some physical adjustments that have made him better. Devontae Adams came to the Raiders for one reason, Derek Carr. So when you saw Sims rank Derek Carr at number 11, how furious were you that he even dared put him in his top 40 and actually like gave him some love? Like, no, that's that's about where where he is. And that, are and you that punching little, walls? No, are you banging no. your head on a desk? No, no, no. Kicking no. kicking puppies? No, you weren't pissed. No, they ranked no. him number eleven. That's, that's why I said he's in that you know eleven, twelve, thirteen ish in that little range, depending huh. on the situation, on who's playing, on how the year went. He's going to be in that area right in there. That's where he's going to be. I think that's a big part of rankings too. Is so often quarterback rankings aren't how good is this quarterback? Like, let's say everything is equal, right? Let's say every single quarterback played with the same wide receivers, the same old line, same coach, same, like, you know, the same imaginary world. Yeah. Like this imaginary world, which quarterback is best. Um, But that's such a like useless ranking, even though you'd like, you'd, you'd want to know just who the better quarterback is. Generally, I feel like quarterback rankings are a prediction on how well that quarterback's going to play next season. Mm -hmm. And of course that has, everything to do with weapons and coach and scheme and your opponents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like that's what Chris Sims does here because like Dak Prescott, I think has proven he has to have everything go his way to be good. And he has him ranked above Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think Chris Sims does exactly that. He just kind of ranks how well he thinks this offense is going to be next season. And the quarterbacks like the, the mascot of that ranking. Yeah. I mean, In reality, all you can do is rank the quarterback plus the situation. Mm -hmm. And and I think, like you said, that's that's really what's going on here. You're ranking the situation. Because, like you said, Dak Prescott with nobody to throw to, he's not going to be ranked ahead of Derek Carr. He's not going to be ranked ahead of a lot of guys. He had three wide receivers last season that would have been our number one wide receiver last season. Yeah, and so, I mean – Basically, what, what what he's ranking is he's projecting production. That's what he's projecting. And, um, I mean, I I can't argue with it, you know. Um, we, ha- we, we have to see a couple things improve from Carr to jump him into that solidified top 10, no doubt, mm-hmm. uh, area. And hopefully we see those things. And, but we haven't seen it yet. So, um yeah, it's maybe some of the guys that are ahead of Carr have been a little bit more consistent because they've had a more consistent situation, and that's helped them be more consistent. Every quarterback in football has had a more consistent situation <laughs> than Derek Carr, and that's what's crazy, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's it's no it's, quarterback it's has been thing. asked to go through what Derek Carr has been asked to go through, right? No quarterback in NFL history has had six different head coaches in nine years. The weight, and not just like new head coaches, but like coaches imploding, right? John Gruden, like he's lost his number one wide receiver, like almost every season, like other than like, like next season will be a new one, number one receiver, like every single year, like it's whether it's rugs or like the 2016 crew, like we lost Jared Tony Cook. Brown. He just, Brown, like he's, he just loses his number one receiver every single season. His line's never good. The defense is never good. Well, and I wouldn't say his line's never good. He had a good lineup not, until yeah. last year. Good point. That, um, historically, like he's had, really bad lines and he's always had terrible defenses. So it's pretty crazy to me that you rank quarterbacks by production and what you predict they're going to produce. And they, and everyone still kind of puts there, not everyone, but like you said, I think the general gist is like 
10 to 13. I think in that take, range. Yeah, normally. Take the average, like just outside the top 10. Like just, just outside. Just right outside, yeah. Considering everything he's gone to, I think that's one of the biggest testaments to a quarterback in a long time, is that a quarterback in a dumpster fire for his entire nine-year career, everyone still is like, yeah, he's just outside the top 10. You can win a Super Bowl. But a lot of, a lot of things have to go a lot better than they have been. And I mean, and, and also to, to, to Carr's credit, because of that uh, uncertainty, you've seen a lot of wild inconsistency in his play. Because mm-hmm. on one side, you could say, oh, he's gone through so much. On the other side is how long have you seen a quarterback that loses as much as Derek Carr has lost stick around and be the, the quarterback of the same team for nine years? So I think, it works I think that's a credit. To, I think that's a credit to how bad the Raiders have been the last nine years. Is that he has a losing record, but n- literally no quarterback has gone through this shit he's gone through. So you're like, okay, that's not. It hasn't been Carr's fault. It hasn't been Carr's fault. It hasn't been Carr's fault. Let's keep him around. And if anything, he's. He's proven that he's probably the best quarterback in football to handle a dumpster fire. Like, imagine if Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson or Tom Brady, or like some of these diva quarterbacks that all Kyler Murray, like, had all these shit go wrong. Card n- never wavers, still leaders. Zay Jones is my number one receiver. Okay. Nelson Aguilar is my number one receiver. Okay. Like, whatever you give me, like, I'll make it work. Right. And I think that's, that's not. Obviously, you want a quarterback that does well in great times and takes you to the promised land. Mm-hmm. But if you're in a dumpster fire, Derek Carr's proven, like, last season was the best example. Like, everything that could go wrong in a season went wrong, and we stole into the playoffs, mm-hmm. right? Like, I think he's – I don't think there's any quarterback better in history that, all right, if nothing's going right on the team, nothing's going right in the front office, nothing's going right in the coach's office, Derek Carr is an arrow, and he can handle it. Yeah, leadership-wise in the locker room, for sure, 100%. I'm not going to argue with that at all. Um, on the field-wise, eh, that could be debated. Um, you know, we, we, we've we've talked a lot about how the Raiders really can't handle or haven't been able to handle success very well. Got off the hot starts and then just yeah. tumble. And it's not all the defense and it's not all the other things. A lot of times, you know, it's – it's. I mean, I don't want to say a lot, but it's it's been cars play as much as anything else. Uh, so I don't, I would say for sure, 100% on the field, I mean, off the field, leadership wise in the locker room. Yes, you are hundred percent. Right. If, if you're going to have a guy drop into a shitty situation, uh, organization wise. Yeah. Derek Carr is the guy to be able to kind of, you know, steady the ship and see what's on the other side. Cause right now we don't know if it's Derek Carr's fault or not. We don't know because there are so many variables and so many unknowns and so many, things that need to be kind of tweaked and adjusted and fixed at the same time. He had, you know, Hey, he had a, an O line that was good. His defense was still bad. Uh, he had receivers that were catching the ball. You know, he had a couple of good receivers, two, three receivers that were, you know, pretty good. And then the next season they couldn't, you know, catch a cold. Right. So it's yeah. like, you seem to be things seem to be lining up a little bit better for him right now. Uh, so, you know, hopefully we get to get a clearer view. I think that's why there's a lot of uh, discussion on Derek Carr is because there's been so many unknowns. It's like you can't really pin 100% yes or no. It's just You can't, it's, compare, it's not, you can't compare apples to apples. Derek Carr can't. to other it's quarterbacks. Tough. You it's can't tough. compare Derek Carr to Dak Prescott. Like absolutely opposite situation, like production-wise, right? Like it's impossible. Just like you can't say he's worse, compare. you can't say he's better because you just, you just really don't know. You really don't. Um, I also – I also love Chris Sims's like specifics about him because like we were all like for the longest time, we we're all kind of chasing the 2016 Derek Carr, right? Number three in MVP voting, mm-hmm. um, you know, Crabtree Cooper, like, Oh, that was the year, right? That, and also because uh, it was the first time in like 15 years we went to the playoffs when we were good. Right. So we're all kind of like chasing that high. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like when you, uh, I don't know, like if you just start experimenting in drugs and maybe you've only drank beer, for the longest time. And that then first like, hit of opium, you're just like, oh. Yeah, or you're just like, Adderall? Like, Not that no, I've done that. Great, right? Like, that's 2016 Derek Carr. It's the only drug we know. And so we're all kind of like chasing that one high. Um, the Derek Carr now, or even last year, so much better than Derek Carr of 2016, even though the 2016 one had the production. In know, between the ears, down. 100%. But I think, I think every part of them. Like, you look at Chris Sims' evaluation of them. Um, like you said, ultimate field general, like we can all agree he's the, if not the best, one of the best guys pre-snap. But then he also said, um, 
the adjustments he's made. Like his, uh, like he called him mobile. He said he's mobile, which is different than like wanting. That. I do. The way he moves in the pocket is so much better. How Don how Gruden, how do you tell when he checks down so often? Last he's year not, was, he's not Johnny Checkdown anymore. He isn't. Look, he it's not it's, last it's one year that's an outlier off of a lot of years. Look, I'm not talking shit on Derek Carr. I'm trying to be realistic here. He is not a mobile quarterback. And you know what? I don't want it to be a mobile quarterback because he's gonna fumble more if he's more of a mobile quarterback. He, he's not a running quarterback. He can in the best case scenario, but he's not a running quarterback, but he's a mobile quarterback. Like he moves in the pocket so fluidly now. Okay, well then say he's mobile in the pocket. I think that, I think that's the definition of mobile uh, as opposed to like no, can run. No, or, mobile is you can run. Or like, you super to, mobile. Just if, like if, general, no, it's like one adjective. No, 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 no. no. Or verb. If, you, if you have to qualify it, then you have to you have to be a little bit better with the description. A little bit more uh, accurate. I think I think mobile is accurate, as long as you don't go ab- overboard. Super mobile, running quarterback can't be taken down. Like he's none of that stuff. But he can he can move he can wiggle in the pocket a little bit. I'm not saying he can't. I, I, what I'm mm-hmm. saying is when he does, norm, normally, I mean, last year was a little bit different, maybe because he just like fuck it. I got a bunch of no names out here. I'm just gonna fling it. Uh, he just check it down a lot, and that's. That is one thing before last year, and if you remember what I was saying from before last year, that's one thing that got progressively worse after his ankle injury was he checked down a ton more mm-hmm. after that. Maybe it's because he's like, you know what, I'm better to this team on the field that can't be getting hurt type of thing. But that last year he 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 raised his average yards per attempt, so that's definitely something that he turned around. Hopefully, yeah, I'm, I'm the, looking to see that go again. Top three deep ball passers in football last season. Right? Okay, that's different than having. A, a good yards per attempt. That's a completely different stat. That's why I said it. No, nope, because you're um, trying to add on to it. Like, yeah, you could be a good deep ball passer. You just not throw the ball that deep. But when you do, you connect. It's different than having a good average yards per attempt. Is, is there any part of Chris Sims' evaluation you disagree with? Um, the mobile thing, I'm not super in agreement with him. But everything else, yeah, uh, everything else, I agree with. And these I, are all. I, things- I, yeah, these I are all things that, that we probably that we wouldn't have said about Derek Carr in 2016. You know what I mean? He wasn't he wasn't the ultimate field general. He wasn't mobile. Um, well, the leadership you know, stuff look, I think applied. The leadership stuff. The 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 the. You know what? I I don't think a lot has changed, man. Honestly, because I'm I think. thinking back. I'm thinking back to that time, and I I think we were all ready for his third year to be primed up because we saw that dumpster fire of the first year when they, what they like went 0 and 10 or something like that to start the year. And he was the first one to to to, to throw throw dirt on that football. Let's go. Mm-hmm. No, I, I remember that. So yeah. let's let you know he was the first guy to jump up, get a shovel full of dirt, and throw it on the football. Bury those last, you know, those first ten games, and let's just win the the rest of these games, right? So he's always been that field general. He's always been that guy that takes command. Um, he, I think he's, that he's gotten had, he's better. Had, he's always had the good attitude of a field general, but like any other human being who does something longer, he's gotten so much smarter, right? Nine seasons. Oh, yeah, I agree. But I wouldn't say he wasn't a field general or a good leader in his third year. I think he definitely Fair. was. Um, as far as doing more at the line of scrimmage, I think that's progressed every single year. And, I mean, I hate to say it, but thanks to John Gruden, he's learned a lot. He's gotten a lot better at the line of scrimmage. Um, let's see here. The size is the same size. I'd say the two biggest things Gruden added Arm. to him was um, – Movement in the pocket. I think Gruden made that a priority, and I think it worked. And just smarter pre-snap. Just another, another smart, another smart coach to kind of just add to what he already knows pre-snap. Yeah, in Spanish you would call that a huevo, which is like by your I balls. Thought huevos were your balls. Yeah, it's like okay. that's like he like he he got better pre-snap because he had to. Like Gruden's like, this is what you have to do at the line of scrimmage, so you must get better pre-snap and he did what is it with chris sims's rankings that everyone takes his gospel like when there's rankings when like when Derek carr's rank came out and when they did 9 through 13 every media member is just like oh this is great oh this is terrible it was like people were treating it like gospel like rankings quarterback rankings come out every day from different yeah. outlets and yet the chris sims ones everyone's getting all hot and bothered about is chris you know, sims like <sighs> See the gospel when it comes to quarterback rankings. I think it's more like the strip T style because, like, they, they he did it in sections, which is pretty smart because you build that yeah. anticipation. 
And as you know, the outside the top 10, that's usually like the, like like 9, 10, 11, like 12, like in that range. That's usually like, okay, he's a top 10. He's not a top 10 because why? Because he's number 11, right? So yeah. that kind of range is probably the most talked about because the first yeah. six, seven, like we, we know who they're going to be. Who's it going to be? Uh, Brady, Rogers, Mahomes, uh, fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Allen. Uh, that's, that's four right there. Uh, Burrow. Fucking Joe Namath. I don't know. Herbert. Herbert, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson everyone, in Charles, everybody, 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 everybody in the AFC West. Everybody in the AFC West. Is this like yeah. the best collection of quarterbacks ever in a division? Hundred percent. When the when the worst one is, people rank him as a, a top ten ish around 11. there. Yeah, like he's arguably top. Uh, arguably, you can make a case that he's top ten, and he's the. I mean, trajectory wise, trajectory wise, you, you yeah. probably three Hall of Famers for sure, maybe four. Three, probably for sure. Herbert's got the makings. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying, trajectory wise. Yeah, Wilson, it's like, yeah, Wilson for sure. Um, so where, where would you rank Derek Carr? Do you, do you uh, have right a hard there. ranking or, or no, are you cool with like, can't. yeah, can't. 10 to 13? You know, 11, 12, 13, 10. If he, if, if he, he really, he has to knock a lot of guys out to get to mm -hmm. number 10, and he can definitely do it this year, and I hope he does. Um, but right now, as I'm looking at things without seeing him play on the field, uh, I would say, yeah, on that, you know, 10 to 13 ish around that area. I, I, I'd put him 10 because I think he's better than Prescott. Um, so I, I, I think Sims's ranking is pretty good. I think he's better than Murray. I don't think he's better than Lamar, but I do think he's better than Dak because Dak has to have everything right to be even pretty good. And Carr mm -hmm. can be pretty good even when everything's wrong. And I think that's a big asset as a quarterback. So I officially make, I officially, as of right now, June 8th, 2022, in the year of our Lord, uh, I have Carr exactly number 10. I'm not going to argue. I mean, he's right in that range, you know. Which is higher than I thought I'd put him when this show started. Like, I, 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 was, I was similar to you. Like, we fight about Derek Carr all the time, but I think 83%. No, we do. We do agree. We Carr agree a lot is the same we just drastically disagreed what to do with him for the longest time um now though like now with his extension now with mcdaniels Devonte, like he's so solidified in a spot where the mm -hmm. idea of i mean next year at least gone right like yeah like that's gone well and next so now, year he's solidified the rest of the years are not guaranteed so like i mean that that's that's the reason like i in my in my last live show i posed a question okay Carr had a lot of excuses. I'm not saying whether they're valid or not valid, but there were there were some excuses out there, or there were some reasons out there. Let's just put it that way, that he maybe wasn't as successful as he could have been. A lot of those have been addressed. Not every single one, because you really can't address every single thing. You know, you only have so much money, so much time, so much assets. Okay. Yeah. But things are getting better, and some of the things that you know were needed to be like offensive line should be better. The defense should be a whole lot better. Uh, better scheme. We'll yeah, we'll see. But I mean. If you look at it's just it giant question be. marks, right? Yeah, like this, like this is the weird part going into next season. Derek Carr is like the only consistent. It's like Crosby Carr, but he's been consistently Renfro. inconsistent. He's been consistently inconsistent. So you don't know if a every couple quarterback's of things, inconsistent. I, There's like no, three no, quarterbacks. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm not talking about everybody quarterback. I, I don't play that game. Everybody does it. I can do it. no. Uh, Derek Carr has been inconsistent. So when we get more consistency around him. What's going to happen? Is he going to be the exact same guy that we've seen, inconsistent, or is he going to just jump and ball out? My question was, um, given the time he's had, given what you've seen of him, if these things around him tend to uh, pan out, better scheme, better coaching, better weapons, uh, a better defense, and his play doesn't increase, he's kind of just the same guy, what do you do? What do you do from there? You know, Is, is, it, is that enough to stick around? That's the question that I posed. And then I gave examples of a bunch of quarterbacks who played for a, a, a team for at least three seasons who had success, who had more success than Derek Carr did, but the team moved on from him because they felt like he wasn't the guy. So that's the question that I posed, and I got just spit on by everybody. I'm like, whoa, I didn't say he wasn't going to perform. I didn't say I didn't want him to perform. The exact opposite. He's already in-house. We already have him under contract. Yes, I would like him to perform. I would like him to, to just play to jump up. Just asking that question, people think I'm being negative. I'm like, no, I'm just posing a question. 
it's a crazy conversation. You, you are almost always negative about car. Like whatever the whatever the direction it can go in, you go in the negative one. No, but that yeah, was the question gotta... asked. That was the question asked, though. It, 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 and I, I even prefaced it like, "Look, I'm not saying that he is or isn't. I'm asking a question, and I'm asking, you know, and, and I'm showing it's, examples." And, and I would and I would argue the exact opposite. He, there's so many question marks next season. Derek Carr is like one of the only consistent parts of it. So, like when you say, "Let's say we take off next season," it, maybe it's Josh McDaniel's offensive scheme. Maybe it's Devonte Adams blowing everything, making everything a mess. Maybe Patrick Graham does <gasps> gasp, makes the Raiders defense average or better, right? Mm-hmm. Like new special teams quarter. Like every like that's the thing is Derek Carr is the only consistent thing the last nine years. Literally everything else changes. Almost everything else is changing next season. So it's once again, it's impossible to compare apples to apples with Derek Carr because even under his own team, things drastically change every single season. Yeah, so- but and that's my that's my question though. My question is if you don't see a marked improvement in Derek Carr's in Derek Carr, maybe not the team so much because he can only do what he could do, right? In his production, if you don't see a marked improvement with all these improvements around him then what do you do? And that was just a question that was asked. And I just said, you're a fucking hater, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and it, dude, this, this guy came on. He's like, yeah, he's better than Dan Marino. I'm like, dude, come on, dude. I'm freaking first ballot Hall of Famer. And, and don't compare their stats because it's a different fucking game. Like, you you were able to get fucking your shit pushed in when Dan Marino played. Like, you can't do that now. And it, it's it's uh, it was tough. It was tough to, to kind of, like, keep it about the question and not about – Oh, you're you're hating Derek Carr, and uh, what what I would say is there's there's too many variables to say like let's say Derek Carr, you know, throws for 400 less yards this season than last season, ran you know what I mean? Let's say that number, right? 400 less yards. It's impossible to just look at the numbers and say it was Derek Carr's fault because there's so many other question marks. Like maybe the McDaniel scheme is just doesn't work. Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams, Aaron Waller can't grasp it. The, the line is just trash, right? Like it would have to be a, my point is it would have to be a tape question. You can compare stats to stats. It's, I don't think, unless there's something drastic, right? Let's say he throws three picks next season. You're like, oh, Jesus, he's this. That's a mi- like, Wow. He really got that mm-hmm. thing under control, right? Then Aaron Rodgers and throws like 45 touchdowns and six picks, you know? Yeah. Like, like it's like, you know, unless it's a drastic stat, like a crazy drastic stat. I don't think the stats can tell the difference in Derek Carr's play because everything else around him changed so much. And that would be my point is mm-hmm. a pure numbers to number to be part of the conversation, right? Absolutely part of the conversation as it should always. But I think with everything being so different, that's just pure stats. You just can't do apples to apples. There's well, that's, that's why, well, I mean, I agree with that. Just in, 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 if you look at it from a smaller point of view, but if you broaden that out and say, okay, his stats may have not increased or stayed the same or decreased a tad, but how did the offense do? How did he do at leading the offense? The and that's what's most important, right? What's yeah. most important is how is this offense going to perform next season? And that's yeah. And that's, that's and that's all and, and that's all the stuff that I put into play. Like, look, how does he do? Does he improve in the red zone? How is our running game improved because of X or Y or whatever? Like. How does the offense run? If you don't see it happening, if you don't just if it doesn't pass the the, the eye test, what do you do? And um, I I really do think that we're gonna find out a lot because Derek Carr is not dumb. He is a smart fucking guy, and he has this like unworldly mind when it comes to NFL offenses. He's had to master so many. He knows so much, and by all accounts, Josh McDaniels is a really good teacher. He's going to implement things that are going to be easy for Derek Carr, not only to master, but to run. He's not going to call things that Derek Carr is not going to be successful doing or the team for that matter. He's going to stick to things that the team can do well. He's going to incorporate incorporate that into a game plan. He's going to adjust that game plan every week. So I have a lot of confidence that we're going to be able to see a truer version of who Derek Carr is offensively. Maybe like, like, like you said, Hopefully this doesn't happen, but if the, the, the defense is still complete dog shit and we lose a lot of close games because of it, okay. But how how did the, the, the offense, how did that side of the ball perform? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going we're gonna to oh, find out a lot this year. Congratulations for making it all the way to the end of our video. If you want Darren Waller to catch 20 touchdown passes next season and for Max Crosby to have 30 sacks, go ahead and subscribe and click the next video.